All right. It is 6.04. Jay, did you want to lead off with some introductions? Sure, happy to. First, want to welcome everybody to tonight's event. Uh, we have with us Rob Robinson and his team with um, Urban Design Associates, also referred to as UDA. And some of you may have had the opportunity to work with Rob and his team so far, but uh, they have been diligently working through a uh, West End area study for us. And Rob and his team would like to present uh, to you tonight uh, what they've uh, been able to work through so far and uh, solicit feedback. So with that, thank you, Rob, for being here. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to recognize our assistant city manager, Shannon Laverne, is with us tonight, as well as our planning administrator, Courtney uh, Powell, is with us. And uh, with that, Rob, we'll let you go ahead and start. Great. Thanks, Jay. Um, and thanks, everybody, for taking out time on a Tuesday night and spending with us. It's not exactly Netflix, but we'll do our best. Um, we, we are very appreciative of all of the time and effort from our last meeting that people um, took uh, the pains to come back to the site and give us their input. It was extraordinary. You may you may get the top prize in feedback um, so far with this uh, with this methodology, but it's very, very helpful for us to hear from you and to begin to um, collate and and kind of compare a lot of the responses and and your concerns, your priorities, your favorite things uh, to pay attention to all of that really helps us as we get into uh, deeper into the to the West End plan. So let me share with you a little bit um, the let's see here the results from last time. Uh, Hang on, it's giving me some options, but I'm not sure it's giving me the the ones I need. Hmm. Let's see here. Is this something I can help you out with, Rob? Well, it's giving me the whiteboard and a file that I can share. It's not really giving me my desktop. Oddly enough, I can go find the uh, the presentation here. Yeah, mine has the same problem, Austin. It shows the. It just shows like I can do a whiteboard or a file. Oh, did it come yeah. up? Yeah, it won't let us. Uh, won't let us present yet. Yeah. Let's try this again then. Okay. I'm seeing a file on the screen now. Is that Rob from you? That's me. I'm loading, downloading this giant file. Yeah. Which may be the only way to do it. Take us just a second. Oh, now it says on the present. So I get to, I, I get to uh, take control. Here we go. That might help. Yeah, yeah there we go. go. Thank you so much. Um, so when we when we talked last time um, about a month ago, uh, we were in this very initial phase of the process where we were trying to get input from uh, folks who live and work in and around the West End, and then began to look at that um, information that you were kind enough to send us, and began to start collating where there is where there's consensus around some of the 
some of the issues that you've identified and opportunities that you've identified. So here we are in April and May, and our, our team has sifted through the input from um, those sessions that we got from you and working with the, the uh, city uh, team on thinking about and exploring opportunities for the West End as we move forward. So tonight, we've just started this idea of of uh, uh, testing, um, testing some options that we could consider going forward, a lot based on uh, your observations and the the sort of cross current with our own observations of what's happening in, in and around the area, and then the council we, we receive from um, the city team, which is very helpful. So, if you remember when we talked last time, this uh, small area plan was to try to begin to tie together things that are happening within the district so that there is more of a sense of what we're trying to be when we grow up, uh, what things seem to be appropriate and some areas not appropriate in others, how we might begin to, to uh, modulate the tools that we have a little bit to define more around character areas that are different than one another and reinforce those. Um, rather than make one size fits all. So uh, a lot of this, uh, a lot of this too came about uh, by thinking about the connectivity between different neighborhoods as the city's growing. And then agreeing on what are shared addresses where we're fronting common uh, city streets and park spaces. What are we trying to do there? Is there a vision for what these places want to be and how best to think about the tools we have um, to both balance the scale of different buildings that are coming into the neighborhood now that may be uh, larger or different in typology than um, what had grown up there historically. So a lot of these things that happen on a day to day basis and happen very quickly in a market like uh, we've all been experiencing over the last decade, particularly in Greenville, where you've seen uh, so much growth happen so quickly. So we spent a lot of this first part just trying to analyze the patterns that, that we saw, building patterns, land use types, inherited um, development patterns that are changing now as new development com comes in, and just begin to understand how these relate to one another. Everything from building uh, buildings and land use to street networks, how it's working, how it's connecting, how it's not connecting so well, where are all the stoplights happening, how are people getting in and out, and then the building patterns. So, you know, what's happening on the ground as we talked about. So you can sort of see on the left, those are just the footprints of buildings. And you can see the larger scale uh, of buildings that are generally happening in the east uh, and then feathering out to much smaller inherited patterns in the west side. The, the inverse of that were all the surface parking lots that are still embedded. Uh, within the West End neighborhoods, and we sort of forget about these, uh, but they were mentioned a number of times to, to think about how those ultimately fill up with active uses. And then looking at inherited patterns of uses, uh, we, we like to pull things apart, sort of understand what's on the ground, what's being used in what way, and how those patterns are reinforced or how they're uh, fraying, if you will, around their uh, edges as new growth happens. And we've got a little bit of both of that. And then, of course, thinking about parks and open space and the institutions that are in the neighborhood or neighborhoods are always very important. Now, um, we sort of see the world of possibilities through a zoning map often about what's allowed to happen where. And so we put this um, uh, uh, kind of on the shelf a little bit to understand what the policy has been, but to hear with fresh ears and see with fresh eyes you know, what is happening and what are the sort of uh, uh, interesting conflicts that uh, go on as as neighborhoods change like this and where we can uh, add clarity to how to deal with that in our land management tools. So what we heard from everybody um, in the in our last session and the website has been open since then, so people have continued to uh, uh, add comments and thoughts about what was being talked about, but we aggregated these for this meeting so that we could sort of look at what's rising to the top between all of the comments that are coming in. 
And uh, for us, it was interesting and we just think about the strengths and we call, you know, weaknesses, things that could be better and opportunities uh, going forward. It was, uh, it was pretty consistent, you know, on the strength side, this idea that uh, commercial buildings and mixed use buildings could work uh, if they're within the scale of the neighborhood and they reinforce that kind of essential characteristics floor field for sure with a a great um, uh, baseball stadium that anchors this end of um, the city neighborhoods is really seen as a, a pretty important use. The adaptive reuse of older buildings, the warehouse buildings along the railroad tracks, those add a lot of patina and character within the West End and was actually really part of that original vision um, in 2004, I think it was, when, when uh, the master plan was done. That talked about the warehouse district and this whole idea of how we might build on that as being a, a very distinctive character. Since that time, uh, the gather has opened um, in the last couple of years over on Augusta Street, and that is a whole new kind of development form that we haven't seen uh, too much of in cities before, but it has become very uh, prominent in a lot of redevelopment acti activities around the country. The senior high school seen as a great asset, something to build around, and the single family homes that also represent the past of uh, the neighborhood fabric and uh, perhaps an indication of the future in, in a way. So uh, that was seen as a great strength. The weaknesses, the connectivity is, is a little tough here. We saw it in the uh, street, the analysis of the street grids. It's a lot of colliding different forms of street patterns and block patterns, and they don't always connect. And here, we're always running up against high traffic volume streets, like Academy, or even South Main Street, which uh, carries a bit of traffic, Augusta, which carries a bit of traffic, Dunbar, of course, which carries a bit of traffic, Pendleton. So it might be better for cars, um, and these were, th these were a lot of comments on this than it is for pedestrians and cyclists. There's some, not so easy to negotiate intersections um, as you get to those larger streets. Um, people did mention the empty parking lots as you walk through the neighborhood about those being fairly disruptive to the kind of cohesive feeling of a neighborhood fabric. The larger multifamily developments seem to a lot of folks to be out of scale um, with, what, with what the neighborhood really presented as a physical form. Trees being cut down um, as as sites develop and the infrastructure, a lot of which was inherited from days gone by, not all that well equipped for supporting a lot of new development. So that was seen as something that we could uh, do a better job with thinking about. And the opportunity for the future, many, many people mentioned this idea of uh, a constellation of more neighborhood scale parks that you can get to the big parks, but there's not a whole lot um, embedded in neighborhoods. And that's generally true of a lot of neighborhoods, but for, for the West End, uh, that's certainly true. Complete streets where, you know, there are face-to-face -face buildings, there's, there's activity on the streets, there's landscape, there's lighting, there's parking, there's space for pedestrians, there's space for bikes. Can we get better at um, making sure that the streets, as we build them back, that they perform better for the future. A parking deck, a lot of uh, folks mentioned parking for the ball stadium and other businesses in and around the district. More small businesses needed um, as, you, as you cross the river from downtown and you're into the West End. There are a number of small businesses, but um, there are gaps in between as well. So how do we attract more small businesses into the West End? The, the whole notion of the West End being a kind of arts uh, oriented district, the, the infusion of public art so that the body language of the West End is much more about that um, was a great desire for many people. More walking paths, get rid of the power lines that are um, uh, traversing through the neighborhood, better crossings for pedestrians and let's slow traffic down. So all really good, important comments uh, and a lot of consensus around those. Some of we asked uh, you last time, you know, what are the top things for you when you think about everything to be done if you had to prioritize? So walkability and connectivity kind of rose to the top. 
appropriate scale redevelopment was a big one, more green space, preserve this inherited character, prioritize local businesses, and then revise the land management tools we have uh, to be better adapted to, um, um, to, to really create the kind of West End community that uh, people envision. We did ask too about if you had favorite places that you thought served as good examples as we move forward and thinking about this. And uh, uh, I will say the vast majority of responses were Greenville uh, because you do have, uh, um, you, you, you are in a class by yourself. It is a, a remarkable place to reference. But as we look around the country too, at other neighborhoods and how neighborhoods are trying to keep their flavor and also introducing that sort of um, less formal quality, small shops, local businesses, rethinking the way the streets work. Um, how do you in increase and enhance the pedestrian realm? So this idea of local character and connecting people together uh, were, were the themes that ran through many of your uh, suggestions for that. We asked too about the future of certain streets. South Main Street was a big one. Um, because it, it gets so much activity and it has a, a, a pretty identif recognizable and identifiable sense of scale and character. And you, you all generally commented that this small scale local character was exactly what you love about Greenville and about the West End. And to lose that would be uh, like losing your soul almost, you know, so how do you retain that? kind of inherited character when new development tends to be much bigger um, in, in scale and massing. The walkability and connectivity, this idea of keeping pedestrians engaged, what that meant in general was that there are too many missing teeth, too many gaps uh, throughout the neighborhood where it hasn't really filled in yet to be a, a sense of a cohesive district or cohesive precincts here. And South Main was certainly that as you get to the stadium, it starts uh, in a way to run out of frontage along South Main Street. So how does that retain its character and and uh, redevelop at the same time? Augusta was very much the same. Um, the the notion that it could have a much stronger pedest pedestrian realm was shared by many folks. It's sort of jammed and wedged in there. Uh, a little bit and it changes from North Augusta to South Augusta, but this this idea of um, really enhancing the pedestrian realm along that street was a big one. Na it felt like this was much more of a neighborhood serving uses, you know, that's they're distinct to the West End art with the theaters and and the, the whole focus on uh, the arts community here. Could this area really develop much more? Um, in tune with uh, the arts than just becoming another commercial node. So keep it funky, keep it human scaled, acknowledge where its roots came from, don't make it like every other uh, street in the city. And then running through the heart of the West End is, is Perry Avenue from Rhett coming from um, uh, the downtown to into Perry, which takes you out through the West End. And uh, Perry really represents uh, a, a neighborhood fabric that has been there for many years and has been has changed over time. Some of it's gone away, but new infill uh, into that single family neighborhood has been pretty robust. So the idea that this is very distinct within the West End to keep that family neighborhood feel is important to the growth of uh, of Greenville and everything else is growing, but the retention of those kinds of neighborhoods is also really hall, a hallmark quality of Greenville. Uh, green space, there are no little kind of pocket parks or neighborhood parks here. Is there a way to introduce those as um, the surrounding land develops? And then on the land management side, uh, the tools that we have now, uh, people felt that they weren't as effective at maintaining the neighborhood scale, that there's a lot of tendency to want to just increase density and completely flip the character of um, uh, a, a, a sort of legacy neighborhood like we have in the West End. And then walkability and connectivity. Once you get to the streets like Academy and you're trying to cross, 
um, that gets to be a really hard thing. So just looking at the, those connections and how better, how we can better uh, uh, facilitate pedestrians within the, the district was important. Pendleton was interesting. Um, a lot of comments there uh, about Pendleton and what it wants to be going forward because it's it's had so many lives as originally kind of a, a big residential houses fronting it and then it turned to highway commercial and now it's a little bit of everything from vacant uh, buildings to buildings now uh, redeveloping um, and to fragments of different uses. So the idea there was that um, it's not a great place to walk now. Um, you can't bike on, on Pendleton, really. Uh, it's just not set up for it. So the pedestrian experience was seen as pretty un universally pretty dismal if you're in between Academy and you're uh, between Augusta, that there was not a lot of reason for you to be there as a pedestrian. And this whole notion of moving from a highway orientation where you know, you got a lot of drive through stuff. It's all oriented to the uh, automobile. Can that change over time? Since really the city is growing around it, it becomes a much more urban street. And a lot of folks thought it was really more suitable for small offices, local uh, uh, neighborhood serving retail or restaurants, that sort of thing um, to become again, much more of a city street. And then um, there were uh, lots of hands up for a grocery store um, somewhere in this vicinity. And um, certainly it's a great candidate for um, uh, a grocer who may, who may be looking in this area to serve this neighborhood. So that's a, th those were great thoughts. What we had talked about doing last time um, as we were moving forward is to begin to think about the West End in smaller chunks and more distinctive uh, little precincts because you can find it as you're walking the seams along these streets. So we've taken a stab at this and this is, remember this whole session is about just testing ideas. So there's nothing written in stone here. It's, it's just responses to uh, what we've seen and what we've heard and uh, what we've talked about a little bit. So we took a first stab at thinking about the West End as a series of smaller precincts where things could have a much more cohesive identity. Um, if we think about it that way, a vision of place, and uh, we can start to understand um, why certain building types might be in some, dis in some precincts and not in others. So it gives us a way to start calibrating in a little finer grain way, what makes sense where. So when you look at this map, on the left hand side, we included the Sterling neighborhood uh, on that uh, west side of Pendleton uh, because Pendleton is a seam between these two and it it really has a similar effect. Um, Sterling is not in this study, but we know from from walking those streets and from analyzing the patterns that it's not unlike uh, Perry Avenue neighborhoods. So it's 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 the sort of fabric that's been caught between lots of changing corridors, you know, the hospital um, a complex that's growing uh, over the uh, last couple of decades, Pendleton, which is changing dramatically, all those use patterns, which which were once residential, changing into lots of different kinds of commercial and office users. So how do we think about those, the way those districts come together, not just Pendleton, but the way um, that you transition into residential neighborhoods on either side. So on the east side where Perry Avenue runs the sort of seam, Rhett and Perry, we, we refer to this as a cottage precinct. It's largely single family, um, uh, has been, you know, whether it's attached or detached and the notion of that little precinct going forward, having, having a different set of criteria for development, we think makes a, a lot of sense. The loft precinct, which is uh, a kind of residual from the idea of the warehouse district, really focuses on the railroad tracks, which cuts right north south, right through the middle of the West End here by the Ball Stadium. And a lot of those buildings, the inherited buildings, the adaptively reused buildings, still have an, that amazing sort of character and sense. Uh, 
sensibility about them that are, you know, there's a legacy of more in, in, we call it industrial kinds of architecture, really different than the more formal apartment buildings or office buildings that you might see in downtown. Can there's still things to be done there? Can we start to reinforce that sense of a loft precinct with the way uh, buildings are designed, the way they front the streets, the way they, um, you know, the infill takes place in between existing buildings? And then the on the eastern side by the river, we call this the river precinct really because it is that front door uh, to downtown and it, it's the most urban of any of the areas within the West End, but it's not everything. So it has a very, we think it has a very def defined sense of itself and sort of threading through a lot of these are, are what we would call the South Main and Augusta precincts. While they're front doors um, to a lot of these districts, including the River District, as you come across the bridge, um, it they they really have their own sense of how they want to fit in, we think, in scale and character to the evolution of the West End as we go forward. So the the South Pendleton precinct and South meaning from Academy to Augusta, we think is really an interesting corridor and linked to other things happening around it. But we thought we'd we'd go through each of these as a way to talk about ideas and then you'll see it's, it will be the same format as last time. We will have this all up on a website and ask you to uh, to please take some time after you hear this and come to the website, and leave us your ideas and your opinions about what seems to be making sense and what doesn't. So on the river precinct, we're not, we didn't go deeply into this um, because there's already an effort that's, you know, studying the the river frontage and the parking and the whole idea of uh, a conference or convention center that that deals with the hospitality um, industry within Greenville. And you know, just when you're there and you're you're a part of it as a pedestrian or as uh, 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 as someone who lives in the city, it is that iconic uh, address in Greenville along uh, along the park and along the Swamp River uh, Rabbit Trail, but it's a big uh, destination. So people are coming from all over the place, not just from the city to be here. So it's like your living room um, and it's an extension of that whole main street spine in a way that, that crosses it. So for us, it, this was all about hospitality and recreation and um, that that notion of creating a, a great public space. And as it develops in the coming years, what's interesting to us about it now is that it's about mm, two thirds full of buildings, um, maybe, maybe half, and largely half of that land is in surface parking lots today. So it's filling out that edge as you come into the West End from downtown or you go into downtown from the West End. You know, River Street is a is a major corridor connecting to Richardson across the river. That to be a great neighborhood that wants to have buildings fronting it on the, on both sides so that you're in a complete street when you're in here. You're not at the edge of something that's really serving a citywide population or a destination um, uh, kind of location. So as it builds, however it builds, uh, with whatever uses, that's to begin to line uh, uh, the, the, the River Street as well as Falls Park Drive, which takes you right back down to South Main Street, so that you feel like you're in a place that's completely alive where it's buildings facing buildings, making great street spaces and the parking is on the edges or underneath. Um, that notion that you would continue building at this downtown density to us makes a lot of sense within that precinct um, to keep the activity on street frontages going and expanding. The healthier that district is, the healthier I think the whole uh, West End is. You're going to need ultimately additional public parking facilities. You've got a lot there now, but as it grows, 
uh, if it does add another use that helps it anchor itself uh, as a destination. This is a good place um, to provide parking so people aren't circulating through all of the uh, neighborhood streets trying to find a place to park. Um, expanded pedestrian connections. We think that there may be opportunities for the West End to expand the pathway systems along Academy, because right now Academy is an incredibly forbidding street to walk beside as traffic blows by me at 55 miles an hour, you know, as this sort of bypass through the city, but it's edges uh, that seems like they're they have room to be able to expand and enhance that connectivity that can get you down to the Swamp Rabbit Trail and out of the um, uh, right of ways of the of the uh, vehicular traffic. Um, South Main Street, particularly in, in the River Precinct, done done pretty well over the years. But this I idea of not losing that scale and character, that sort of front door um, as you come across the river and you're into the West End is pretty important. People don't want to see that replaced with um, uh, a much bigger building scale. And then this idea of continuing to integrate public spaces, plazas or piazzas or, or even little pocket parks within that precinct where possible. Because it's one of the great things that you discover about Greenville and particularly about the West End when you're there are all these sort of surprising third places that that pop up. So th that will that will emerge over time. And those for, for us became sort of key elements to that. The corollary to that would be the South Main and the Augusta precincts. And we put these together because they're they're remarkably similar in scale and people's uh, responses to them both. They both act as front doors. Uh, into the West End and uh, South Downtown Augusta, which um, is a very long street that goes out in, into the county. It has a sort of north section that you've urbanized a little bit as it uh, reaches to South Main Street. And then as it goes further uh, to the west and to the south, it turns back into more highway oriented. Uh, uses. So how do we think about this now that we've got the children's theater and we've got the stadium and, and the whole idea of the entertainment uh, district that could be around this area. How does that how does that grow over time? We got great body language clues. All I got to do is look at what's here. It's remarkable. Um, people love it. It has this sort of distinctive personality about it, but it's all about the small scale stuff. It's not about big giant buildings with similar storefronts all the way along a street. You can get that anywhere in any city. This is about how do we develop in a way that really recognizes this kind of uh, scale and character that um, uh, that needs to come along uh, with the, the older uses on South, uh, South Main. It changes when you get up to the stadium. If you're following out the street, it sort of becomes more uh, residential in a way, and it's it's still a, a bigger, you know, the scale changes as you get by the stadium. So it has moments. It's not exactly the same uh, all over, but there are vestiges of these kinds of buildings that are at this end as well. So some of the new developments actually appended to the old, and you're getting uh, a, a kind of mix of different scale of uses. So thinking about street frontage, how it transitions, what it wants to be, you know, as it develops in the future is important. Same for Augusta, right at South Main Street in the bottom left, you know, it looks like a little piece of city. Once you once you start going uh, south on Augusta, it starts to break apart. Um, and, you know, there are bigger gaps in between things, there are tiny little sidewalks uh, for folks. So it it's had some improvements, which are really terrific, right around where the gather is. And it's going to change some more um, as sites redevelop there. So we wanted to think about that a lot. So building on the historic character of these small shops, uh, try to enhance when we new buildings come in. Can we increase that the public realm between the street edge and the building fronts? 
can we also think about limiting height right at, at the street edge so that there's maybe a three story maximum, which would be the old buildings and then you step back away from the street if you want to go taller so that what you see when you're in this in the street and what you feel are those smaller very distinct building forms and then this idea of getting back to integrating public art in both the building designs public spaces murals sign signage landscape uh, hardscape plaza areas just get more creative with that and make it you know a sensibility for the west end this is not something that it can be legislated. It's what we hear coming from you. And those that's a, you know, that's a two way street for sure is be beginning to accommodate that kind of creative uh, sensibility about making place. So we looked at new development patterns um, that were, which are sites that haven't been developed on yet. And there, there aren't a whole lot left on South Main. Um, the largest area is right before you get to the stadium um, between O'Neill and the railroad tracks. But on uh, Augusta as well, uh, there's a, a fair amount of frontage that can happen within the transit site um, as we uh, as we approach the stadium. We thought there were a couple of interesting opportunities here, uh, particularly with that. Uh, I call it the Augusta Triangle because you can't really tell what's going on inside of it. You only see the frontage occasionally on South Main or the frontage on Augusta as it splits away from it. But along the railroad tracks and adjacent to the stadium, um, you know, long term, you'd love to see the railroad tracks become something else. And uh, that may happen, but it takes a very long time in cities. However, if we're thinking about redevelopment um, in this area, the thing that's missing a lot is pedestrian connectivity from South Main to Augusta and from the stadium on both on both sides of that, how you can get into the dis into the district if you're on the south end or if you're on the west end or the east end. And so the notion of creating a corridor, a public, uh, a pedestrian corridor along the tracks beside it um, as a public space that connects both Augusta Street and Field Street, which is going to become a great um, um, event space within the West End, begin to connect those through, not with vehicles, but with uh, pedestrians so that you can walk easily from one um, uh, area to the next area. And then think about redevelopment patterns that reinforce that, that start to make the tracks uh, actually a phenomena, you know, a, th a thing that's that's uh, distinct for the West End and an interesting place to be. So today, when we're standing uh, at the stadium and we're looking back towards downtown, it's that right hand side that you see the the empty lot on the other side of the tracks, pretty much all the way down to O'Neill, which is going to redevelop at some at some point. So, what should that feel like, particularly that at this end near the stadium and this idea of. Uh, beginning to add tools that uh, that allow us to create. A much smaller kind of frontis piece for buildings for bigger buildings so that you're distinctively seeing individual shops. That's what you perceive when you're in the space. This also calls, for instance, on, on this corner, this might call for a, a much more generous setback so that we get a little plaza there at the tracks before you cross over to the old cigar factory across the street there. And it gives people a place to go before the game, after the game, any events that are happening here, whether it's a music event or um, um, it, it's an event with, within the West End. So, so that that becomes more of a face to face street with active uses all the way to the stadium. So it's the idea here is that when you're at the street edge with the building, you can only go up to a maximum of three stories and then you've got to step back substantially before you go up again so that it does not dominate uh, your sensibility and the sense of place. Same thing on Augusta. If we're coming out of Field Street, which is good, the I mean the renderings I see and the ideas for it I think are spectacular. 
and you see the railroad track running up the left side there. You know, we get uh, really what it is now, which is a very utilitarian site, but it's a weird little triangle here, and it's got a nose that that uh, is not all that buildable, but it takes you right to Field Street and where you know the the event space is being talked about. So you can see the sidewalk on the right hand side that runs along Augusta. That's not a generous uh, pedestrian realm. Um, we lose the on street parking at this end and it becomes uh, a turning lane. So we have to think about getting more space between where building setbacks can happen and connecting it to this corner, which we think should be a public space. So it goes from that to this, and you come right out of Field Street into a new public park. And then if I just go off to the left, I can walk along um, the stadium walk all the way to Main Street. And I've got a completely kind of new connectivity that we don't have now. And Augusta is the same idea. Keep the scale small, keep it individual, the idea that you're expressing individual shop personalities is not one big architectural phenomena and widen that public space that's showing double the amount of sidewalk along Augusta on this edge than it has today. So that's that's the sorts of things, those are the sorts of things that we can identify in thinking about revision to the land management ordinance and the tools that we have. So those which wrapped around that stadium and this idea that there's still a loft precinct in here. And I was really happy to see the architecture for the new mixed use building just south of the stadium on Field Street between Vardry and uh, Field and, the, and Augusta that has a sense of its origins in, in the idea of a warehouse district. So if we look at RET, you know, we see a whole range of things going on from the Lynx apartments, right, as you um, cross over from River Street uh, into Rhett, and the housing that's being plugged back in bit by bit, block by block. And then up and around the historic warehouses, the kind of place that makes is just, you know, you couldn't draw this stuff. You know, this, this stuff happens organically over time, but is the, it's this kind of patina uh, and this kind of sense of place that we think we can better reinforce with the way we think about new buildings and new architecture in this district. And, you know, people are already doing it. It's just not happening as uh, a, a kind of high level um, vision of, of this little precinct at the end of the day. What are we all building here? And, you know, does it resonate as something that is uh, you know, different than the cottage precinct or different than the river um, river precinct. How does that, how would that look and feel? And then, you know, it also, again, brings us back to that end of South Main Street on, on the stadiums because the, the stadium itself has a kind of echo of that sort of architecture and that sort of scale. So in the loft precinct, we want to preserve the South Main Street integrate additional public spaces that we just talked about. We saw one at Augusta. There's the other little plaza on South Main right by the tracks. Provide those expanded pedestrian connections where we can. Uh, make something out of the railroad tracks. Don't ignore it. Love it. Make it the West End. Uh, make it a space. Break down larger building massing into much smaller and distinct building forms. And then let's talk about architecture really responding to the historic uh, uh, industrial legacy that we have here. Uh, it doesn't have to ape it. it. It becomes part of it, so you recognize it. So in this little diagram, you know, we have identified frontages in the little drawing up in the right-hand side of, you know, what areas will buildings uh, ultimately front streets and where do you want them to front streets? And then we can talk about scale and character. You see the arrows here, the field street, which is becoming this great new public space. And then the idea of connecting Maine to Augusta along this little dotted green line. And then another one, the red arrow that's a little bit further east. Right now there's a parking lot that um, connects, doesn't really, you can't drive through on South Maine. There's a big transformer there, but it goes from South Maine all the way to University Street um, on Augusta. 
And over time, we think that as those sites redevelop, that that ought to be both pedestrian and a vehicular connection, um, it, which is another way to connect these two uh, these two districts together. So, looking at the Greenville Transit Authority site, it's uh, uh, beside the stadium. This is the the uh, site that we think when it when it does come in for redevelopment to study this idea of a public space at this juncture between Augusta and Field Street, another little public space right at the other end across from the old cigar uh, warehouse on South Main. And then, you know, whether whatever the uses are, parking and uh, commercial office, residential, that they really reinforce the scale of Augusta, the scale of South Main and add something new. So we did this little doodle uh, to kind of look at it from the air and in the bottom left, you see uh, Field Street at, in its incarnation as a kind of event space and festival street for games. You see the tracks going through and then you see a setback along the east side of the tracks with a walking trail going through that connects the little plaza that we looked at in the first rendering uh, and park space at Augusta and Field Street. Um, Art springs eternal. Uh, we treat the infrastructure with, you know, public art as well. All of these are great opportunities and link those two addresses together. The same along Augusta, the buildings are set back deeper um, than you might normally have them to, to create a much more enhanced pedestrian realm right across from the children's theater and around the gather, which has created a new public uh, kind of destination there as well. And um, the buildings, if they're taller buildings, they get buried in the middle of the block and not out on the frontage for the streets. So in thinking about that and sort of completing this idea of the loft precinct around the stadium uh, in between South Main and Augusta, seems like a, it could be a lot of fun um, to think about and, and, and visualize. Um, the cottage precinct that and we, we call that just really because of the scale of the housing. It's Perry Avenue uh, is the principal street that connects through uh, going uh, parallel to Pendleton. So it sort of splits, right? It's residential on the east side um, of the, the division line between Pendleton and Perry. And then it's much more commercial on that western side where it fronts Pendleton. So we've what we noticed as we've been observing and documenting the neighborhood is that this neighborhood is really under a lot of threat, uh, I would say, to disappear um, just because of competing interests in um, development patterns. What's this going to become? And little fragments like this, you can see this, the streets. There's not like one uh, rectilinear block in the whole place. It's a combination of the way streets came together. So it's very fragile. And to keep places like this healthy, it's really important that we think about the scale and character and reinforcing that so that it grows as this amazing little uh, single family uh, kind of enclave in the middle of everything else that's happening around it. It's got big streets on the north side with Academy, Pendleton is blowing through. It's got a lot of bigger development that's happening to the east of it. So, in thinking about it, when we looked at what uh, what was happening uh, in and around it, you know, there's a lot of new single family housing, both uh, smaller attached units as well as uh, single family detached units. But by and large, you know, the building forms and the setbacks and the front porches are all uh, uh, part of the ethic of building uh, new single family housing in that neighborhood. And we think it's a remarkable resource. You don't have a lot of it um, throughout the downtown, these close in neighborhoods. So what we do have um, begin to reinforce it because it's got a big range of small cottage houses on the side streets. Uh, represents a, a, a lot of diversity and economic uh, integration. Those to have the chance to kind of get re 
uh, refurbished and and pulled into the future too, we think is a great uh, great opportunity here rather than tearing everything down and redeveloping at twice the density. So that's that push and pull in um, areas that are developing uh, very rapidly. And so you kind of have to make a decision about what's the best for the West End in general and how do we do this in a way that's more coherent. So in that precinct, um, as we look at it, it's really about infill, sensitive infill and reinforcing those patterns to make that to help this neighborhood uh, become whole. And once it it has that sort of confidence face to face on the same streets, houses with houses, uh, scale the scale being um, pretty delicate uh, within there, uh, we think that 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 is what for us makes the most sense um, through the future. So it's maintaining the scale and character. You know, there's a lot of character here. For instance, these are two brand new houses on the right hand side. Uh, one of them is just a little single family cottage. The other one is a two unit unit house, but you can, it doesn't matter when it's the right character and the right scale, it all works together. So we would recommend that we modify the land use regulations to define much more appropriate building types for this little precinct as well as for the others. But looking at these lotting patterns and um, adjacencies are going to be pretty important. Uh, we need to bring in some love on um, things like lighting and sidewalk repair into the heart of the neighborhood as things have developed uh, pretty rapidly. But for instance, to have the same beautiful little South Main fixtures uh, find their way uh, into the neighborhood versus Cobra heads on tied on to telephone poles. I think we can do better and, you know, begin to send that message back to, to all of us, you know, who walk it daily or who visit. And then think about how we handle where commercial development like fronting Pendleton or the commercial development that fronts Academy, how we create better transition zone standards between single family lots and commercial lots when they butt up against each other. So we took one of the sites, uh, which was a state office building that um, uh, no, no longer has its offices in it. So it's a it's a full block, and it's a it's a land parcel that straddles between the single family character on the the north side of Perry, north and east side, and Pendleton, which is largely becoming uh, commercial. Um, uh, of one sort or another and has been. And on the right side, we, we, you know, when you look at a site like that, that is that large that might come onto the market, the idea is that we, we really split the program. So on that north side, um, this represents uh, single family can be attached, can be detached uh, with its open space requirements being a little neighborhood linear park facing Perry Street to give that whole neighborhood a kind of core identity uh, in the middle and provide a great amenity for everybody who's living in that district, not just along Perry Avenue. And then on the Pendleton side, you might do more density there. You know, it's a bigger site, you might structure park that. It, you know, it, to make the whole thing work, um, that we think would be a, a pretty interesting um, kind of trade-off. but. You know, that's something that we need we need to all weigh in on and visualize for the future because uh, redevelopment happens at a pretty quick rate. So you can see a little rendering here. We're, we're standing on one corner looking uh, towards Academy Street, right? You can see some of the little houses to the right down there. And what's interesting about this land, it's parking lot all the way around the building. And then as you get to Perry Street, you go down a little hill and it's flat. And there are these beautiful trees on the corner. You could not make a better park. Um, so it's relatively flat. And what we had shown is that the, the new housing would not front a street, it's fronting the park. So it's got a, a pathway along the top of the hill. You can sort of see it here. Um, and it connects to, um, uh, the park space down below. So it sets up a great 
kind of address for residential. And yet, I think to to cement this idea of being uh, in the West End within um, the cottage precinct would be um, a great thing to to try to accomplish. And the Pendleton precinct, it's um, it's a lot of different things, man. This street has gone through um, the the washing machine over the last you know, 40 years or so, because it, ha you know, it's, it's sort of things are everywhere. There's some things that are up against the street. There are other things that decided that, that, that they would orient themselves from Alexander to Pendleton instead of um, uh, parallel to Pendleton and, and I'm sorry, to Arlington and Pendleton, rather than parallel to the streets to follow those sort of inherited patterns. So we've got a little bit of everything. This is gonna take a while to redevelop, but it's clear that it's it's already happening. Um, and how do we make sense out of it in the West End? And we'll, we'll talk about the connectivity in the bigger picture in, in a minute, but uh, folks weighed in on this uh, uh, pretty intensively. So what you see on the photographs and the left and the right, bottom right, is that things are happening, right? These are sites that were one story buildings largely and now they're generating as new uh, office and um, commercial uh, enterprises. Uh, so what, what I find interesting about it is that they're really unsure about how to front Pendleton, not quite sure where the public realm is, you know, what to do with the edge of the street, uh, how to behave, because um, they're al alone, there's no real coherent uh, vision for it. So we, we met after uh, your input with the city team and the, and the uh, transportation engineering staff and, and others and um, talked about what are the options here? What can we think about? What, how much traffic is being generated here? What does it mean? What are the limits? This is a state owned uh, right away. Um, and what's happened in the past that might be that might point us to success in the future. And coming out of that uh, w w was in sympathy with uh, what folks told us in the last meeting. Right now we've got four lanes that come through um, from Academy all the way to uh, Augusta. Could this not be two lanes? Does it really need to be four lanes? Where, where are you going in between those two points? And could you convert uh, the two outside lanes to uh, on street parking. Can we add bike infrastructure on the street without getting killed? Right? Um, how do we do it in a way that that really that promotes that kind of uh, option versus just for the hard hardcore cyclists? And then this seemed to us like an, an area where you're going to want to regulate setbacks block by block. So, and some of these would still have the old houses graciously set back with beautiful lawns in front. That may be a pattern, you know, for partial block or that frontage on one side so that you can set up a really different kind of sensibility about what the street uh, can be as it, you know, as it grows. So don't do one size fits all. Let's look at it block by block and begin to um, to reestablish setbacks here. Add lighting and landscape improvements to Pendleton uh, for sure. Focus on more on district wide kind of services and office uses. That's sort of what's happening here a little bit. I mean, you've got a lot of residual stuff, but by and large, we're, we're seeing those uses start to come back in. And then this is one all along this back edge of creating good transition zones with a single family that's on the Arlington side and also on, on the Perry side. Um, to do this kind of stuff, and you guys have been successful in Greenville doing this, you did it on Augusta Street, we'll look at another example. You've got, we've got to implement on the, on the land use regulation side, curb cut reductions. You can turn anywhere here on this street. You know, you don't need a light. Um, it's all parking lots. Um, in, in the front and then create some cross what we call cross easement access. So one property next to the other, we're going to have, 
you really want your circulation to come off the side streets and not a free for all along Pendleton. So those are the sorts of requirements for that. And then what we looked at in terms of a redevelopment scenario, you can see the frontages and the dark purple up in the little diagram in the upper right. And then just thinking about where new buildings could come in is let's change the body language so that the buildings are now like the new ones we saw trying to define a street edge in a street space. And then we consolidate the access as you go block by block, one property flips to the to the next one and you gradually eliminate a lot of the curb cuts and unify the way uh, people are getting to parking lots. So it creates a cleaner edge to the single family residential and you don't get these through patterns that um, are happening now in on, on both sides. Uh, and we, we think that's that's doable. We did when we started talking about well, what to do, what to do with Pendleton, uh, I realized that you already had done it uh, up at the West End Village. Same street, traffic is a little bit different. It gets even a, a little bit more hectic uh, out here, but the whole transformation um, that you were able to make as a community to turn this from a strip center and uh, four lanes of moving traffic into a parking street and a little commercial street that is fabulous is, you know, let's let's take the lessons we've learned there and see if we can build on that uh, to come back towards Augusta. So if we just kind of look at it diagrammatically, now there's the state office building on the right hand side that we talked about. Uh, remembering when it was full of offices with all of the parked cars, but you've got this street that's largely service fields and parking lots uh, along four lanes with a cacophony of uh, curb cuts all the way along it. So one idea is that um, it gets on street parking on the east side. And that is a redeveloped state office building, if you can imagine that. And on the left side in the light green is a protected um, cycle track, you go both ways. Um, and that that becomes that inside lane on the west. So that I do get, um, there's enough room there to be able to do that as a protected, whether it's bollards or it's planters, um, what have you. It's just, it makes it much more usable and much more friendly uh, for bikers uh, within the city. So that that's one option uh, that we want to look at and and we'll talk to the state about it if this, this seems like a desirable thing. Another one is just uh, to take that walkway on the east side and double it as a multi-use path. So instead of just a sidewalk, it's like Indianapolis if you wanna go online and look at Massachusetts Avenue there. That's the way they treated that street. So you can do bikes and pedestrians and there's still room enough um, to, to have a forecourt into the buildings. And so there's no bike infrastructure within the street, but on one side of it. Uh, the other side remains a, a sidewalk, but now you got on street parking on both sides. So that's another option. And then a third one, is you would still only get on the street parking on the east side, but you could have a protected uh, bike lane on, on one on either side. It doesn't have to be aggregated. You just can't get two parking lanes, two moving lanes, and two bike lanes in what you have now um, as, a, as a section for Pendleton. So those are ideas about increasing the pleasantness of it. And you can see on the left hand side, you see how deep that those lawns are where this is a block that has two of those houses in it. So, you know, can you set up a kind of body language there that that, that becomes a great um, a green on one side of the street. The other one uh, has building logic that gets pulled up closer to the street. And then the, the last one of where you have unprotected bike lanes, which are a little bit they're about four and a half feet. You'd like to have them about five. Uh, it could work. It's just not as comfortable as the other two. So there's ways to do this. Um, so if any of this interests you, please weigh in. And so we just drew it from the air. And you see it now in the 
sort of horrible Google photograph <laughs> up in the upper right. And then we just illustrated the one when it has the cycle track uh, on the west side and that whole street gets to be a, a totally different um, kind of character and feel to it from what it is today. So that, those are the thought about the each of the precincts uh, and ideas about those. And then we were just noticing, you know, on the citywide scale of, of things, the the whole opportunity to connect the West End Village um, to the Augusta Triangle in the stadium feels like the absolute right thing to me in, in Greenville, that those are two nodes that um, kind of define, could define the, the, the this, this sort of edge of town. The site that we were just looking at, which is squarely in the middle, could also be kind of this geographic center if it's done correctly so that you can connect uh, the two ends of the barbell, if you will, in the middle along Pendleton. And we've got St. Francis and the Bon Secours Hospital site, which is a lot of employment right there. Um, as that is the big node that's here for employment. So thinking about how Pendleton can be a vital kind of connector to those uh, nodes along Pendleton, I think is pretty exciting. We know that there are a minimum of three intersections um, that are have been studied, are being studied, and need to be improved for crossing and pedestrians. So that just to mark the South Main Street, it gets a little awkward there. Uh, where it hits Pendleton, are there things we can do there? Uh, Perry, when you try to cross Academy, good luck. You better be in a hot air balloon to make it across there. It's not such a great, uh, a great experience because no, no, no real way to to do that as a pedestrian. And Pendleton and Academy, you know that is um, that's just a high traffic volume. Um, you don't want to be anywhere near there as a pedestrian. It's it's really unforgiving. So getting those in tune, tuned up for being better serving neighborhood serving uh, crossings is a big deal. Um, we looked at a couple other things too. And we talked about it uh, a bit earlier. I, I'm really always fascinated by the ability to take some underutilized right of way or real estate, uh, real estate, and can we? Uh, get pedestrians connected better to the big park system. There's Unity Park that's, um, you know, coming in just the just to the north and east of you. And we looked at a lot at Academy and walking it back and forth and looking at the edges to see, think about whether or not you could expand the little tiny sidewalk that's there now, which is very uncomfortable, and be much more aggressive on the pedestrian realm that's out, outside of the moving traffic. Uh, right away. So we think there's a way that you could do that to go from the railroad tracks um, right to the Swamp Rabbit Trail beside Academy. Uh, and that might be something to explore a little bit further. South Main Street, it just wants to be a great walking street all the way, um, you know, across the river and to Pendleton. And I, we think it's well on its way if we can get the frontage to happen correctly and, and uh, fix the little connection there at, at Pendleton. So at Academy, here's what you got, you know, when you're um, near Calhoun Street coming out and you look at the guy who is bicycling on the sidewalk already um, because you're never going to ride in that street on a bicycle uh, by yourself. And the whole notion of widening that so that it becomes a you can bike and walk uh, on this. And if you follow it all the way down into um, uh, into the east towards the river, you know, is there a way to be able to get this connected uh, directly to the swamp uh, rabbit trail along the river as that redevelops? So that's kind of what we've been noodling on. Um, all those ideas that you left us, they're still on the wall. And they're on that website. We're going to ask you to do a similar thing, if you wouldn't mind, and um, connect. You can see it on the on the screen. If you can connect into the engagetheteam.com uh, GVL West End uh, website, 
then those there are those questions there about the precincts, what you saw, what you think makes sense, what's missing, what can we do better, um, um, and, and any of you know any comments for us as we think about what makes what makes sense in the options that we're showing. What do we need to work on a bit more um, to to have it reflect what you you know what your vision is and how you feel about. Uh, the way the district is evolving would be uh, really helpful to us. So, Austin, I don't know if I should turn it over to you or Ashley for uh, getting us into the website so folks can see it. So, Rob, if you click on your link there, it should take you to the website and it'll show people. Great. So, yeah, I don't know if you. It's probably going to open in another window, so I would just make sure that you're you have your other window. Just click it here. You should have been able to just click the link. If not, I can share my screen, which I have it up, so I can do that. Let me. I don't know if Austin, you'd have to make me the presenter to be able to share. Thank you. Doing so now. All right, everybody. So if you go to that link that Rob just talked about, the GVL West End, so that's engagetheteam.com slash GVL West End. And then that'll take you to that homepage. And when you scroll down, there's an area that says share your feedback. And you can click on add your idea. And that'll take you to that familiar idea wall set up that a lot of you have been helping us populate. So it'll have the instructions, which you can dismiss, and then you'll see different markers about each of the precincts that we talked about. And then to get more information about each one, if you click to the side, it will talk about the urban design recommendations that we talked about for each of the different precincts. And so the question that we're asking is what is your feedback on what you heard tonight? And it can be specifically on the urban design recommendations, and it can be on anything else that you heard tonight too. We will be putting a video of this presentation up on the site uh, in the next couple of days, so you'll have access to that as well. Um, but those are, uh, you, you guys have been pretty good at this so far, so we're looking forward to seeing what, uh, what, what you post to the idea wall. Thanks, Ashley. Stop sharing. Okay, so I see uh, we have a question if the presentation will be available online so that the slideshow can be reviewed as well. Um, I'm pretty sure yes, but I'm going to defer. <laughs> yep. Yes, so we won't uh, it'll be on the It'll be on the city's web page and I'll provide it to you for the social pinpoint page. Perfect. Thank you. Did you wish to go into public comment? Rob? Sure. That'd be great. Great. Happy to do that. So everyone, uh, if you're an attendee and you're joining us tonight, uh, what I'm going to do is, well, actually, first off, we do already have one. Margaret, hold on for a second, and I'm going to unmute you. Margaret, you are now unmuted if you'd like to say your comment or question. Thanks. I wanted to be sure everyone knew uh, though anyone who lives here probably already does, that on that empty corner across from Cigar Factory, we have a newly paved parking lot that they laid mulch down and have landscaped. Looks like it's only waiting for street lights to be fully operational in a pay box. But the city has not done a very good job of planning a way to walk from the end furthest away from the stadium to the street. So, you know, that's going to be landscaping that gets walked across all the time. 
Um, I really like the setback idea that was mentioned about lower scale by the street and then taller further back. I also think I have concerns about the left hand of the city not knowing what the right hand of the city is doing. You're talking about the cottages district, but there's already a plan afoot for pretty large townhouse attached housing complex all set back in there on in that Perry area, tearing down some of those single family homes. So I also love the Pendleton Street ideas. I think I would vote in favor of the wider multi-use and keeping parking on both sides. And I'm saying that as someone who walks Pendleton Street far more than I drive it. Um, I think that pretty well sums it up. Definitely improved walking across Academy and Pendleton. We live in the ball fields. We own a condo here. We walk these streets just for recreation all the time. We go up to the family dollar. We go downtown. We walk them all. And uh, trees along Pendleton, because that's really hot in the summer. Yeah. yeah, good point. I think that's enough for my three minutes. Thanks, Margaret. Thank you. Next up will be Danielle Fontaine. Danielle? Yes, hello everyone. Uh, very much enjoyed the presentation and I agree with about 99% of the ideas that were presented. Um, the one thing I did not hear anything about at all is uh, affordable housing in uh, specifically in the cottage area. And um, I was a little surprised about the low density uh, presented there. I think it was proposed that uh, new housing would be one to two stories high. Uh, a lot of the older housing already reads as three stories high. There are uh, tall homes with elevated porches, two stories, a tall roof. So, so the scale to me, I think, can easily go to, to three uh, stories high, maybe a little more in the inner area of where the mosaic uh, uh, district is, uh, development is proposed. But, but I think what um, I would most uh, desire to see in that area is uh, affordable housing that does not read as affordable housing that is totally integrated where you can tell you can't tell who's in affordable housing who's not and I think that is uh, extremely important to keep a, a mix of income in this part of the city. Super thank you. For all other attendees wishing to speak in just a moment, I'm going to unmute you all. If you would like to speak, please state your name. And then we, after that point, we will mute everyone again. And then I will unmute you individually for your three minutes. And, uh, now unmuted, please state your name if you'd like to speak. One of them had a multi-use pathway and on the opposite side, and on street parking on. Uh, Ms. Barrett, uh, well, you'd like to speak I, for a few I minutes? I mean, this is a plan, dear. We got to fund it and make it happen, but, <laughs> but it'll eventually happen. All right. I am not hearing anyone uh, raise their voice. Um, maybe we'll give it another minute or two. Try again. Uh, Ian Thomas. Just a second, Ian. Apologize. Go ahead, Ian. Um, hello. Uh, I just want to say thanks for putting all this together again tonight for us to look at. Um, I know it'll be fun to provide some comments and, and feedback on the website. Um, absolutely love the virtual platform for us to be able to provide some pictures and annotated, you know, diagrams for you guys to look at. Um, I've got two comments or two questions. Uh, the first one is about the, <clears throat> it kind of connects from the GTA site where there's hopefully, you know, some public activation where we may have, you know, 
in the future, maybe some type of sidewalk or rail trail. And I would, I'm curious to see if any thought has been put into basically expanding that rail trail all the way from uh, Augusta, all the way across Academy Street to provide a very large uh, pedestrian crossing at Academy to really help connect downtown, south downtown, all the way to Unity Park. Um, obviously, that's a very uh, awkward eminent domain area with the uh, charcoal place and you've got the Croc Center and the school over there. Um, but knowing how Academy is kind of a, you know, a chain of <laughs> elevation, that's one of the few spots on Academy that's kind of flat that actually has some decent visibility for pedestrians. And uh, I'm just curious if there's if there's any possibility to making that a, a pedestrian realm area that would be so inviting for people to cross Academy to get to uh, Unity Park, but also have the full scale of access across Main Street and to Augusta. Mm -hmm. um, the second comment is is back really focused in the uh, Perry Avenue and I think Ware Street McCall, uh, where you just have some of the older established. Uh, homes and you have some long term residents there and I, I definitely appreciate the the concept that you provided at the state location where basically we're trying to reestablish a sense of a neighborhood by adding single family homes back into the mix instead of seeing one additional block development, which this area of town in the West End. That's all we're seeing right now is apartment complex, apartment complex, and you know, multifamily. So I think adding into the mix an opportunity for single family homes where it's traditionally a block development is really exciting. And I and I really think that'll help connect both sides of Perry Avenue because if the if the mosaic comes out the way that they want to, to develop it, you're basically gonna start severing the neighborhood in half. If that yeah. section of Perry Avenue is not properly, I don't want to say protected, but I think properly planned for the future to connect, connect uh, single family homes together. Um, so thank you for your time. That, those are all like all my comments. Thanks, Ian. I am going to unmute everyone again. Again, if you wish to uh, speak, please state your name and we will then mute you all and then unmute individually. All right, you are all unmuted, or excuse me, yes, unmuted. Uh, if you'd like to speak, please state your name. Deborah Powell. Anyone else besides Deborah Powell? Please state your name. All right, just a second. Go ahead, Ms. Powell. Thank you. Mr. Robinson, thank you so much for the thoughtful consideration you put into all of these ideas. I think fabulous. I don't think they're cookie cutters. I think it's unique, just as we feel like the West End is new unique. And I really like the the word pictures you gave us too. Help, you know, really bring a chuckle here and there when you um, aptly uh, suggested you needed the hot air balloon to get across Academy safely. But some of those things make it so entertaining and, and it helps us visualize exactly what you're talking about because we live with it. But I wanted to uh, just make a disclaimer here that that Rob Robinson has not been at our dinner table. However, uh, he could have been because I felt like some of the language about the cottage area. Uh, we live in that area and the words that you use so aptly stated we were we feel like we're under threat and it's fragile and we need to keep it healthy and thinking about the scale and character that's there and protecting it. I just really love the way you put all that in succinctly up to words. And we do feel that way and we feel like we want to maintain the character and be a part of this vibrant West End for many, many years to come. And I just wanted to thank you for all these great ideas. Thank you.
Thank you, Ms. Powell. Rob, I believe that completes our uh, public comment. Um, if you had anything uh, further to present, per se. You, you want me to go? That was just half the show. You want me to just continue? <laughs> <laughs> so I know it's a lot. It's like uh, drinking out of the fire hose for everybody. But um, I will say it's in proportion to all the responses we got back. So it, we were delighted. It's it's um, it is interesting. I, I'm not a big fan of virtual meetings uh, myself, but uh, what we've noticed with this process is that it's given everybody more than ample time to think about it, add comments, um, and they've all been very thoughtful and very helpful. So um, thanks to everybody for enduring uh, yet another Zoom uh, kind of Zoom meeting. Uh, to get input, but it's vitally important. Yeah, there are things that we presented, right, which are different than things that are happening uh, at this very moment. And you, you know, you like to be out in f as far as you can in front of all this. Um, but you guys are—it's uh, a new—it's a new chapter every day because everybody wants to come to Greenville. So that's a good problem to have, but it also creates a lot of anxiety and like, what's what's the future for this? future for that. So we need, I think in this kind of process, the idea is that can we uh, really develop consensus around uh, a vision for how we want to grow. And then then we can, you know, reframe the toolkit we have to make sure that we're achieving uh, what we can achieve through the through those mechanisms. So it's it's helpful for us. We draw, we draw early like this so you can tell us exactly how you feel about it. Nobody really reads maps. Um, so it's helpful to us to know that if we're if we're walking down the right pathway here or do we do we need to change the messaging and the, the thought process a little bit to make sure that we're more accurately reflecting uh, what we think can we can achieve, you know, as as development moves forward. I think there are a lot of exciting connections to be made here. Um, it, it is it is a pretty special place, and you've got a lot of uh, amazing and exciting things happening, bubbling up all around you. So it's all of our jobs to make sure it happens in the right way, and the 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 stew that we're making tastes really good at the end of the day. So thank you all for participating. We'll be back um, with refinements for what we call the draft small area plan, so that. Uh, uh, you can weigh in on that as we put the winnow into a series of recommendations moving forward. So Rob, thanks. I have a I have a quick comment. See, uh, this is Russell Stahl, and uh, whenever my unmute button goes off, Shannon's I think she takes an extra breath. So so hang in there, Shannon. Um, but uh, on behalf of City Council and as a Student of planning currently, I, I just want to thank you. This this has been your way of uh, sharing a very complex plan. Uh, it is understandable, and I think it's palatable. And I, I I just really appreciate your ability to um, to do what's right for the city. So, yeah, kudos. Way to go. Thank you, Russell. Yeah, it's a delight for us. Uh, an honor to be working here. Thank you. And I, I also texted Shannon that I want to be like you. Yeah, <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> you really don't. We say that all the time. What are you talking about, Rob? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, kind words. Well, we got a lot to do and um, no shortage to sure think about. That's for sure. Well, thank you, Rob. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you to all of our staff team here this evening, including Austin, Courtney, Mary Douglas, and Jay. We really appreciate you all taking the time to sit and hear this um, presentation from Rob and provide your feedback. And we look forward to seeing you all again in May. So with that, we will have this posted to our project webpage, hopefully by the end of the day tomorrow. Is that right, Austin? Yes. Great. So thank you all for attending tonight. We look forward to your comments and feedback, and we'll see you soon. Have a good evening, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.